Hello and welcome back to another end up with our video. Today we are talking about my final winter storm Izzy predictions. So let's get right on into it, starting off with the National Weather Service page. And we have a lot of watches, warnings, advisories. So here's the graphic and just pick out your county. I'm not going to go state by state, there's just too many. Uh, and they'll be in your weather app too. So we're just going to read this little blurb here. A major winter storm will impact the eastern U.S. on Sunday into Monday. The highest snowfall totals are expected along the spine of the Appalachians, as well as across the lower Great Lakes. The most significant icing is expected over the Carolinas this morning, Sunday morning. Significant impacts to travel across these regions is expected. So let's start off here with the European model. And basically, just in generics, I have gone over my scenarios. That was yesterday. And this is still showing that coastal inland hybrid uh, track here. And it is still showing decent snowfall totals for areas such as southern New England, northern New England even. Then you have the NAM 3km model, which is showing the inland track where you only see significant snowfall totals very far inland, such as in New York and western new york and western pennsylvania and everywhere else which is over to rain at some point uh, especially in areas such as southern new england and northern new england so speaking of snow totals the european model is still being very bullish on this storm and we see those high snow totals in western new york and western pennsylvania but also in areas such as maine new hampshire uh areas such as uh vermont Massachusetts, even Connecticut, New York, southern New York, and then, of course, the Appalachians are going to get hammered with the storm as well. But just a general uh, 6 to 12 inches across much of the northeast, excluding the I-95 corridor, which will be seeing an inch at the most across most of the region, excluding D.C., which gets two in this case scenario. Now, the NAM not even close to that amount. Uh, D.C., less than an inch, barely an inch at that point. Baltimore, nothing. Philly, nothing. New York, maybe an inch. Boston, maybe an inch. Southern New England in general won't be seeing more than three inches except in the high elevations. Same thing for northern New England. This storm is going to be targeting the very inland parts of the northeast, such as the areas right around the Great Lakes and on the border with Canada. That's the NAM 3km model's rendition of this storm, where everything is inland and every, everything even close to the coast just gets absolutely nothing. Because when you add in the fact that these areas are also switching over to rain, all of this is just going to wash away. Now, also, you have a significant ice threat with the NAM 3km model. It is being very bullish on icing from this storm. And you see very high amounts of ice, especially in areas of the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky. Even moving into areas such as New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, and then the upper elevations of New Hampshire and Maine. Getting some ice as well is... New Jersey and Delaware, but lesser amounts there, uh, mostly areas less than a tenth of an inch, but that could still be very impactful if that actually does happen, which looking at the fact that much of the area has been below zero for feels like temperatures and in the single digits for normal temperatures over the past uh, 24 to 36 hours uh, is very likely that you see those areas that just freeze on contact maybe the roads will be okay because they'll be treated um, many areas are already dumping out salt and sand and declaring a state of emergencies for this storm but right now it does seem like the nam's predicting more of a wintry mix to rain events for much of the northeast excluding areas in the very western parts ohio eastern ohio western pennsylvania parts of new york and then the mountains so, the European model showing some wind with this storm as well, as well as the NAM 3km model. Uh, just more, more of a general wind event with the European model, uh, 15, 20 miles an hour. 
Uh, but Cape Cod could see up to 40, which is pretty typical for these types of storms. Then you have the NAM 3, which also is pretty bullish on this storm uh, since it does have that increased uh, millibar strength. And you can see areas even in inland Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, getting that heavy wind uh, strength. These are just sustained winds. And some areas inland could even see like 20, 30 mile an hour winds sustained over a period of time as well, especially in upper elevations and along the coastlines. So that is just another key factor for this. Now, in terms of my opinion here, uh, I have made this graphic, which isn't a exact prediction in terms of inches of snow, but I really didn't want to do that because some areas will be switching over to rain, and I want to talk more about net snow. So, let's start off with this area in blue, which is mostly snow with some sleet and freezing rain. Uh, especially in areas such as Pennsylvania that will be getting more freezing rain and sleet from this storm. But much of these areas in this blue color will be netting, you know, some sort of snowfall. Uh, definitely in parts of western New York, western Pennsylvania, where you could even be netting a foot of snow. But generally in these areas you will be seeing that net snowfall accumulation. So net positive. Uh, some areas such as Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont will be netting less just because they'll be on that eastern side of the low pressure as it moves up. And that is just the area that northeast side of the low pressure is just not as strong as areas like western New York, western Pennsylvania that will be seeing that central to western part of the low pressure. But they will also still be in that snow as well. Then you have this pink area, which is some snow, mix, and rain. So evenly divided between snow and then mix and rain. Evenly divided between those two, the snow and then both the mix and the rain come together. So these areas will be netting some snowfall as well, as well as picking up some ice, especially in areas of the upper elevations in northern New England as well as in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, getting some significant icing there as well. Uh, these areas could be netting maybe an inch or two with some snowfall. Uh, maybe even areas such as New York and Pennsylvania could be seeing maybe net three, four inches of snowfall. Moving on here to this light green area. This is my toss-up area because the Depending on which model you look at, this area is going to be either netting uh, three to four inches of snow or not getting any snow at all. So with that scenario kind of dividing itself, I didn't want to put 100% confidence into anything. So most of these models show a starting off as snow and then mostly mix and rain. It just depends on when that snow transition to rain happens and if there is an area of freezing rain sleet in the middle of that but i'd say really in this light green zone net zero snowfall maybe plus or minus an inch or two uh depending on uh where bands set up when that's that snow to rain transition happens and how strong the snow and the rain are as that transition happens so those are just all the key factors at play here and then in the dark green i have all rain uh, both models kind of suggest this uh right along the coastline really you're just too close to the atlantic moisture and the very warm air coming off the atlantic to get any sort of real snowfall so that's it for my predictions but in terms of European or NAM 3 kilometer model, this is one of those weird times where you really can't see any correlation between the two. It's either the NAM picks up on what the European model is showing or the European model shows what the NAM is picking up, but this time they have two completely separate ideas. And right now, at the time that I'm filming this, it's about one in the morning, so four hours before you're seeing this at the earliest. 
and we still have two completely separate tracks intensities snow totals for both of those models and realistically either scenario could happen so linked in the cards above is my scenarios video from yesterday where i talk about this but this is really just a toss-up storm and i just made this graphic because it really isn't clear and i did want to give something so that's my general predictions for this Sorry, it's not very specific, but with that snow to mix to rain transition, you really can't have complete confidence in an exact snow total because of melting and banding and all that transition timing, all of that. There's so many X factors that it really just makes every single prediction Ill not really illegitimate, but very, very you know out there even the weather channel and these areas that have a lot of money to pour into their models and their guidance are struggling to figure out hey how much snow are these people going to be netting after this rain transition so just this is just a general overview but that's about it so if you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like subscribing and hitting the bell and thank you guys so much throughout this entire winter storm izzy coverage period uh i've had some of the most insane uh statistics from this whole period and i thank you guys for taking the ride with me but that is all i have for today thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time